Education is essential in helping people getting ahead in life. It reduces poverty, helps the economy, creates modern society, and helps with empowerment. But only if the education system does what it's supposed to do. However, education is far from only writing, reading, or doing mathematics. It should teach you how to lead a happy and quality life, or help you how to think or solve problems. But what would happen when you don't have education? Could we still thrive as a society? How would life be? There are many types of education: formal, informal, and non-formal education. Formal education is held at schools or universities, and many of us have participated in formal education, as many countries made it mandatory to be in school to a certain age. They usually have qualified teachers that are supposed to teach in a certain way to reach certain standards. Formal education is very systematic and organized, and students get easy access to jobs. But it can be boring to some students, and the lack of flexibility and conventional learning can cause a huge waste of money and time. Informal education includes learning from parents, like how to ride a bike or prepare a meal. Reading a book from a library or educational materials can be considered as informal learning. Timetable is absent, and no specific method of learning is present. This usually happens in a community or at home. It's a lifelong process of learning that happens without conscious effort to learn, and happens organically. The learning can happen anytime or anywhere, and people have the freedom to choose what they want to learn, either at a library or a media like television. But the freedom to choose where to get the information can be misleading and harmful, and this type of learning lacks discipline and good habits. It can also produce empty results, which can be highly wasteful. And most of the learning can be biased because of cognitive bias, where people seek out the information that supports their beliefs. This is why many people believe in conspiracy theories. The last type of education is non-formal education, usually for people outside of schools like adult literacy school or adult basic education. People can learn skills like swimming or join a fitness programs. The schedule can be flexible. The programs are mostly vocational and practical, and systematically implemented. It doesn't have exams and very practical, but attendance of participants isn't consistent, and you won't get a diploma or a degree. Life without education can be limiting, but people wouldn't automatically be stupid and dumb, would they? Back in the days where humans were hunter gatherers, back when we don't have formal education system. Teaching was already there. Most of the learning was informal learning, and the kids would explore and play on their own, and adults would let the kids play freely. The knowledge about the environment was crucial and could mean life and death. And the kids didn't work long hours, and they didn't see the distinction between play and work, because everything in life was seen as play. The rise of Agriculture turned it all upside down and stunted the exploration and playtime, and forced kids to be laborers. People stay at one place rather than living a nomadic lifestyle, and the skills of hunter-gatherers to carefully harvest what nature has to offer now turn into repetitive and unskilled work. And much of this work is done by kids. Families get bigger, and older children need to take care of their younger siblings. A few thousand years later. Children would work at factories and seen as slaves. Some died from starvation and exhaustion, until someone came up with an idea that children need education. Then education was seen as work for children. They're supposed to do that and was forced to do it, leaving little to no freedom in what to choose. Most of the time that we are in schools, we learn a lot of things like algebra, calculus, physics, chemistry, and art. But do we remember all that, especially when they're being forced on us? Can you remember what type of classes in schools that have shaped you and helped you to be what you are today? I can't. I don't think I've learned many things in school unless I'm really into the subjects. But many of the things I learned, love, and know, have been from voluntary exploration. But what would happen if there's no driving force to learn and kids are free to choose whatever they want to do with their life? Would they be functional adults? Sudbury schools or democratic schools is one of the few alternative schools that let students decide what they want to do with their time. Want to play video games? Go ahead. Want to play outside? Sure. 
Want to change the school system? Absolutely. In a Sadar school, it's not about academic achievement. It's all about being a well-rounded person. Students get to choose what to study without the pressure of adults looking down on them. They make their own lesson plan and classroom rules. They have adults there, the school staff, but they don't set the rules. They're decided by students, where rules are proposed, then discussed at the regular school meetings and decided democratically. They can even hire or fire staff members, manage the school budget, and everyone has to be present during the meeting including the staff. They all have equal votes and the students outnumber the staff, so they control the environment and most decisions are made by picking the simple majority. The students can make a complaint if someone violates the rules where an investigation, a hearing, a trial, and a sentence can occur. This lets the student know that actions have consequences. The students here are responsible for how they spend their time. You can see students playing at the playground, watching birds, cooking, doing art, playing sports, dancing, talking, acting, doing a science experiment, and even playing video games. If students want to learn academic subject, they can learn on their own, ask another student, or ask the staff. The staff can help students to facilitate their learning and sometimes they will hire someone to help students learn advanced subjects. For example, if a student wants to be an ecologist, they would help by recommending a book or reference material, finding an outside resource, or even finding a local ecologist to set up a program where the students can visit the ecologist to see how they work. However, some people argue that the children wouldn't be motivated to learn because they have so much freedom and basically can just do whatever they want. Well, that's not entirely true. The schools have laws and students have to do chores and even when they can come at whatever time they want, they still have to be at the school 5 hours a day. The students know what actions have consequences and they have to be responsible for their actions. They have to clean up their mess and have to face the consequences if they violate the law. They can file a complaint and it will be reviewed during the school meetings. They have no age segregation and the staff members have to be seen as role models. Younger kids can learn from the older kids and vice versa. But what about the kids that play video games all day? Well, some kids do play video games, sometimes for the most part of the year. But eventually, they would move on. Some take weeks and some take months to move on. But eventually, they would see that pursuing meaningful activities are more fulfilling than just being wasteful. But the situation would only occur if the environment itself can bring about some awareness to how the real world works and the environment at Sudbury School seems to be doing that. The graduates of Sudbury Schools continue to further their education with 80% of graduates going to college, art schools, and culinary institutes. These students go to college because they know what they want to be and they study the things they want to learn based on their career choice, not because everyone is doing it. However, some students find it very difficult to transition between Sudbury schools to a traditional settings like college. It usually triggers some anxiety to write papers or learn mathematics in a certain way when they're so used to all the freedom. But there's not much of a difference between Sudbury graduates to the average traditional school graduates. One of the Sudbury graduates were surprised when he got an A in biology, while some of the students from the traditional school fail, even when they have already learned biology. But it's not surprising because no one really learns anything in school, because most of the time, all the students ever do is memorize to pass the test and forget everything after. Even the most enthusiastic person can find standardized tests excruciating. A student has to learn the same thing over and over again just because of the nature of the questions in standardized testing, where they don't ask the right thing. The Sudbury graduates however reported high satisfaction with their life path and career, and many of the students graduated successfully, sometimes even better than most kids from traditional schools. So, Sudbury school environment is maybe the closest thing to how a world would be if there's no forced education, given the resources and books at the school and a good environment where everyone is able to do whatever they want, with some sets of laws of course. So, by looking at the results of these Sudbury graduates, 
It doesn't seem that bad. <laughs>